sun, surf, and sand. Images of a perfect getaway, but your escape may not be complete without a good book to keep you company. The ultimate for me is to have my readers say, oh my God, I have a book hangover. New York Times best-selling author Mary Kay Andrews knows something about page turners. She is the queen of beach reads with 28 books. Sunset Beach, April 2018. Drew turned the key in the ignition and the white Bronco's engine gave a dispirited cough. Her latest novel, Sunset Beach, a fast-moving mystery with a touch of romance and humor, hits close to home, literally. She grew up not far from the Florida coastal town. Sea turtles return every year to the beach where they were hatched to nest. So that's what this old turtle has done this year. I've gone <laughs> back to my home beach. Drew Campbell is the book's central character, and her life is a mess. I had to blow up her life at the beginning of the book so I could rebuild it. Andrews takes readers on Drew's journey as she figures out her next chapter in life, complete with solving a cold case based on a real life crime. Writing mysteries has come naturally for the former newspaper reporter who covered crime for 14 years in Florida and Georgia. There's a tiny bit of my DNA in all my protagonists. She's also a bit of a top chef. Rita's been asking for a cookbook, and so I thought, let's do the Beach House cookbook. With her regular appearances on Atlanta TV, touting recipes from her cookbook. You're gonna um, beat up the eggs, the half and half, the milk. And incorporates her love for rehabbing beach homes into her books. I tell people I don't play golf, I don't play tennis, I just play house. <laughs> Social media savvy, Andrew's life is an open book, making her accessible to her many fans. Join us as we discuss her writing style, what's next for the prolific author, and so much more on this first person one-on-one -on -one with Mary Kay Andrews. Presented by St. Louis County Library and HEC Media. Well, Mary Kay Andrews, welcome to St. Louis. Thank you, great to be here. Well, we're not as fortunate as you to grow up in uh, by the ocean. We are a little landlocked here in St. Louis, but we can still enjoy your books poolside. I hope so. Especially this latest one, Sunset Beach, which we've been talking about and uh, showing our, our viewers. Uh, you, it's interesting because you, you, your background has taken many twists and turns, but mainly you were a journalist starting out. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, all of us these days are creatures of reinvention. And so I started, I started my writing career as a journalist. I worked in newspapers uh, the last 10 years at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. And during that time, newspapers changed. And I, 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 my, I changed. I wanted to write bigger stories for a wider audience. And so I started tunneling out um, by writing in secret. And so I wrote one mystery, and it didn't sell. But the next one sold based on five chapters. And that was, um, I left newspapers in 1991 and never looked back. Wow, that's terrific. And a, quite a career it's been. So let's talk about that because as you, as you did uh, start writing and doing the crime stories, you did, let's see here, if I look at this, about 10 um, from 91, as you mentioned. Well, 92 is your first sale, up to 2000. And then you switched a couple things, your name. Yes. You went under this pen name of Mary Kay Andrews. True. Uh, do you share with readers your other? Sure, it's not a secret. <laughs> I know. So Kathy Hogan, is it Trocheck? Yes, Trocheck. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was writing mysteries on, under my real name, and I had an idea for a different kind of book. It had a different protagonist than my series cal character, who was Callahan Garrity. And uh, Eloise Weezy Foley was an a antique picker in Savannah, Georgia. And because it was a different kind of book, and reader, mystery readers are very brand conscious. They only want you to write one protagonist. And there was resistance when I tried to do something different. So that's when I decided to adopt a pen name. And it's a combination of my kids' names. What was your son's name? My son is Andrew, Andrew. so that's where Andrews came from. And my daughter is Mary Kathleen, but we call her Katie. That was an easy, easy way yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was pretty simple. So we talk about under Mary Kay Andrews from 2002 to today. You have written not just one book a year, but in some cases two books a year. Uh, yeah, long ago, two books a year. I quit doing that because it gave me premature gray hair. Oh my gosh, that's pretty quite prolific. Yeah. And stressful, I gather. It can be, yeah. it can be, but everybody's mm -hmm. job can be stressful. Well, sure, well, that's a great way to look at it. So I'm intrigued by that though. I mean, just to come up with those ideas year after year, or in this case, sometimes month after month. Yeah. Uh, how does that work for you? Is it one thought? Uh, you read something, a combination of these things? 
You know, it's a different it's a different process every time. The ideas come from everywhere. Um, one time I dreamt an idea. Uh, I dreamt up the the premise for a book called Spring Fever, where a character I had a dream that I was sitting in church, and um, it was two or three dreams nights in a row. And finally, I was trying to figure out when I was awake what I was doing in that church. And so in my dream, I tapped a girl on, on the shoulder and I said, excuse me, what are you doing here? And she said, I'm waiting to, I'm watching and waiting for my ex-husband to get remarried. With Sunset Beach, the idea came about, I wanted to write a book on my home beach. You know, sea turtles return every year to the beach where they were hatched to nest. So that's what this old turtle has done this year. I've gone <laughs> back to my home beach. And Sunset Beach, um, it has kind of a noir um, sound to it. And I had a, a friend, a young friend, who was working for his father's law firm. And I said to him, now, you're working for your dad's law firm. What if you opened a file one day and found out your dad was in, involved in something really illegal or unethical or criminal? And he said, oh, that would never happen. And then my mind started to turn. So with, in relationship to Drew, our main character, was that based on a real life story that you saw somewhere? No, I, um, I knew that Drew had a complicated relationship with her father. I wanted her to have really, I had to blow up her life at the beginning of the book so I could rebuild it. And so I thought, well, what if she was some, involved in a, an extreme sport and she's a kiteboarder, which fits perfectly for with Florida. Um, there are, and she's a profess, she's been a professional kiteboarder, but at the opening of the book, she's had a terrible um, midair collision, and so her kiteboarding days are gone. Her knee's been blown out, and she's got to figure out what she, what's the next chapter of her life. Like a lot of us, and, and a strained relationship with her father. Strained, to put it nicely. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's part of the part of the story as well. Um, so. Her mother has passed away. Yes. Also, also a lot of trauma in the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Um, she is at a crossroads, and women at their cro at a crossroads interests me as a person. I mean, they have to make some tough choices, and Drew doesn't have a whole lot of choices. She's out of a job. She's out of her lifelong passion for her sport. She's broken up with her boyfriend. She's homeless, and so when her long estranged father arrives on the scene in Fort Lauderdale and throws her a lifeline, she she grabs it because she doesn't have anything left to lose. Right. And then you leave little clues along the way when she gets into the cottage. Uh, but we get snapshots into her grandparents of which she was close, of whom she was close to yes. at some point. Yeah. How do you determine with the characters which way things are going to go? Maybe you had an idea for one, but it doesn't turn out to be how you expected them to be. So. How do you fashion it so that it all makes sense and, and maybe tricks the reader into thinking it's one person when it's really somebody else? Lots of times I don't know the twists and turns that the plot is going to take until I get to a point and uh, sometimes the character that I think will be a love interest, he just won't step up. He won't do. And then I have to sort of th rethink my ideas for the plot. And so. Um, when I first started writing fiction, I was very methodical. This is my blueprint, and this is how it has to go. But the longer I've been doing this, the more freewheeling I've gotten, the more I think I've gained confidence so that when my inner voice says, I've got a better idea, I allow myself to take that detour and find out what's down it. And, and, and usually the detour works out better than I had planned. But I never know until I go there. And the great thing is, I have a delete button. Yeah. If it doesn't work out, right. I just delete it. I was going to ask you about that process yeah. of going, you might wake up the next day and go, you know, aha, this is the way I'm going to go with it. Cause, and you look back and then, yeah, shh, goodbye. Yeah. 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 How much of your upbringing then, living near Sunset Beach or at Sunset Beach, did you incorporate into the book? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. My, my childhood time at the beach and Drew remembers going fishing with her grandfather, her poppy. Um, her f grandfather was Cuban, and um, but when her parents split when she was five years old, um, her mother took her and moved to the east coast of Florida, and her father stayed uh, in St. Pete. And so that's very different from my childhood. But you know, there's there's a tiny bit of my DNA in all my protagonists. Well, including with Drew, as she's working for her father's law firm. And, and working her way to different jobs within the law firm, she latches on to this one case that right. they've somewhat dismissed. I'll just, I'm just going to keep it simple. Um, 
is that part of your interest in crime and mysteries that in this case with this book yeah I think so the one I think the one characteristic Drew and I share is I have a passion for justice I hate when people are treated unfairly and Drew sees something in this grandmother um, and she feels badly uh, because the woman's daughter's been killed and now she's left to raise a, a little girl, her daughter's little girl, and she won't take no for an answer. And she's really kind of a bulldog. And I think maybe we, we have that in common. Once I get m uh, something in my teeth, it's hard for me to let go. So when you write a book like this, and you've, again, like I said, you've done a book a year since 2000 of this genre. Yes. Um, are you, are you, you're in Atlanta and you just put yourself in a certain place? Or do you have your office? Is there somewhere you go? I always like to find out about the writer's quirks and things you must have. <laughs> well, I embed myself in the setting of the book. I, when I'm really hard at work, I need to put myself in the world of the book. I need to be where my protagonist is. So I, with this book, with Sunset Beach, I rented a little cottage um, down the beach from Sunset Beach and walked on the beach at night and um, went to some of the same places Drew goes in the book. One night, I and, and things happen when I'm in the setting of the book. And, and they those things that happen work their way into the book. They get woven into the plot of the book. So one night, I was dripping, drinking a glass of wine, watching the sunset, my favorite time of day at the beach. And I, I saw this heron uh, in the shallow water. And I followed it, I kind of crept on it, up on it, and I wanted to take a picture of it because it was so beautiful against the sunlit uh, sky. And the bird kind of looked up and looked at me and just kept going. And, and so I took a picture, and then th that works its way into the plot of the book. Sure does. It's kind of a returning, a recurring motif. Can you find a cottage these days? I mean, she inherited this cottage. I would think that you can't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Price-wise, she she got quite a fine there with her. Right. right. Well, her grandfather built it in the 60s yeah. with materials left over from other construction sites. So in the 60s, Sunset Beach was was a dump. It was a rundown beach, and it was cottages, and there were some mom and pop uh, tourist courts there. And now today, a lot of those cottages have been leveled and mega mansions in their place, but there still are some very humble little cottages. Uh, on the real Sunset Beach, along with the mega mansions, and um, there's a couple of high-rise condo towers, but I'm surprised by how low-key the real Sunset Beach still is. Well, it may not be anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the secret's out. Yeah, the secret's out. Uh, so, so having said that, let's talk about some of your fans and followers. Uh, what are they telling you about the, this genre now that you, you got, I mean, did you kind of leave your mystery followers behind? Um, you know, I, I write whatever story is, is stuck in my heart and in my brain every year. And so with the past three books, I kind of return to my mystery roots. So starting with The Weekenders and then last year's book, The High Tide Club, those all had a mystery in them. And prior to that, the books were more, um, well, there was always some kind of an element of mystery, but they were more probably romantic comedy. And there's some romance in this, yes, too. Yes, there's some romance yeah. in this. There's an ill-starred romance. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. start out very well. No. Yeah. Um, so I think my, my readers mostly love it. They love the twists and the turns that, they, that this book takes. And I think they're surprised that a beach book has some depth to it. Right. To find a beach book for me, I, because I read all different genres for my work and just for pleasure. But how, what is the definition? I think a beach book is just a book that keeps the pages turning. Um, it has characters that you relate to. Uh, it has a compelling plot. And again, that's to keep those pages turning. And, and for me, maybe there's an escape element. So I think a, a good beach read takes you someplace you want to go, at least in your mind and in your imagination. And then, you know, for me, a great beach read, I forget where I am. So at the end of the day, I look up and maybe the sun's going down. I forgot to cook dinner. Um, maybe I'm sunburned. And maybe I, the ultimate for me is to have my readers say, oh, my God, I have a book hangover. Yeah, because you just because binge I, through it. Right, yeah, you yeah, just yeah. binge through right. it and there's, you have nothing left. Yeah, I mean, this is a, I mean, it could be a weekend. And, well, I mean, think about this. I was at the beach and within the, the weekend, yeah. long weekend, I was done, yeah. 
depending on how busy you are. Yeah. Hopefully you are relaxing at the beach. Again, Mary Kay Andrews, so interesting. Um, what advice do you give to other writers or aspiring writers who think, well, I guess I could do a book a year. I don't know, it sounds awfully daunting to me. Well, I start with a synopsis, and, and that's what I tell people. If you don't know where you're going, you'll never get there. So for me, the synopsis is a roadmap, and it tells me who my protagonist is, what, what she's challenged by, and by the end of the book, how she's changed, how she gets what she wants. And I write in a really linear way. I start in the beginning, and I write all the way to the end. I think it's really helpful for beginning writers to kind of plan out the ending of their book. Because again, it gives you a road map. It doesn't mean you have to follow that. There were so many twists and turns that this plot took I, that I didn't expect. But I had an idea of where I, where I wanted Drew to end up at the end of the book. And so I think if, it, if staring a blank page in the face is very daunting, even for, even for somebody who's written 26 novels. But if I have a road map or I have notes, then it doesn't seem so impossible. And the other thing I tell people is don't think about writing a book. Think about writing a chapter. That seems more manageable. Right. A chapter for me when I first started writing fiction was the size of a Sunday newspaper piece, about 10 double-spaced manuscript pages. And so I don't think about, oh, I'm going to write a book. I'm, I sit down and say, I'm going to write a scene. I'm going to write this chapter. And my scenes and chapters are strung together, hopefully like a beautiful string of pearls. Right. Well, you mentioned scenes. I actually thought when I, as I'm reading it and when I finish, this could be easily a movie. Any movie rights? Uh, not so far. No. If not you with have any of these books? Well, we're working Options. on, we're working. <laughs> um, and if you know Reese Witherspoon's phone number. Yeah. <laughs> She, now, is that someone you'd have in mind for Drew? Oh, of course. No, I, I think because she does so much with women's fiction. Yeah, right. I think she's very interested in, in um, helping women's stories get told in a, in a broad sense, and I love that. Right. Well, with Big Little Lies, her sure, yeah. made into it. Which one of your books would you like to see on the big screen or the small screen? Ladies' Night, I think. Ladies' Night was a novel from a couple years ago. It's set on Anna Maria Island, and it's a story about... Um, three women and a man who meet in a re in a divorce recovery group. That sounds like it's got a lot of dynamics that would be right. good for television yeah. or or TV. Television now. Well, anymore with Netflix yeah. and all these other options. Yeah. yeah, they're really movies on television. The series are so popular. Yeah. Boy, you get a whole other following with that, too. Be great. So you've been on book tour, and how Sunset Beach, I guess, has been well-received. Yeah, we just debuted on the New York Times bestseller list at number five this Pretty week. Good for you. So that was very exciting news, and yeah, the show rolls on. When you write in a linear fashion and you have that um, synopsis, do you send that to your editor? Yeah, my editor and my agent, we talk about it, we bat it back and forth before I actually start writing the book. Because if my editor hates the idea, it's never going to fly. So, And it's really more of a collaborative effort than a lot of people realize. So it, my editor, I've been with her for 10 books in 10 years. I trust her taste. Um, she's got great sense on what kind of a story appeals to my readers. And my agent is also part of, part of that collaboration. It really helps to have sort of the hive mind behind, you know, giving you good constructive criticism on what you're thinking about. Because I'm going to spend a year with this book. It better work. Right, right. So the years that, two or three years, that you had, you wrote two books a year, what was that all about? I started a second series, and it was only lasted for two books. And so my kids were young, and uh, it just, it beat me up. <laughs> I, was I really thought, I, I know lots of writers who do more than two books a year. Uh, and I really thought, oh, I can do that. But guess what? I couldn't do it and sleep and raise a family. Is there anything that you haven't written that you'd like to write about? I, yes, and I'm going to do it next year. Ooh. You, any tidbits yes. you to share with us? I've been wanting for some time to write a book with a newspaper setting. Well, that makes sense. So next year's book is going to be set at a small, struggling newspaper in a beach town. Well, these days... They're Sadly, all struggling. Struggling and newspapers kind of go together, sad yeah. to say, but true. Yeah. The idea of even turning a page now is, you know, it's nice that we still have the, the hard copies. And speaking of that side of it, um, 
do you a lot have you found out of how many of your fans like audible books they love audible books and i love them in fact i'm going to do an event um coming up with the narrator of my audio, of my audiobooks her name is kathleen McInerney. she's very talented we've never met so we're going to meet um, in the coming week, and I'll get to meet the lady who puts voice to my stories. That's wonderful. Now, yeah. does she do different voices? She does. Yeah. She does. Yeah. I always find that fascinating. Yeah. It's a, it's a yeah. skill I don't have. That's a story I need to do is how the, the, the behind the scenes of the, how these Yeah, I think books. it's fascinating yeah. because uh, so many of them can do men's voices and women's voices and English accents and German and French. And um, as I say, that's not a skill I have. So you're, you're, we don't hear your voice in there. Or no, maybe. I'm a one-trick pony. <laughs> Actually, there's a little Q&A with me at the end of the audiobook. yeah. That's nice. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, Mary Kay Andrews, thank you so much for joining us here in St. Louis and uh, for allowing myself and my producer to take our, your book with us to actual beaches. I love going on, to the beach on with both people. <laughs> so thank you and uh, for entertaining us as my well. My pleasure. Great to be with you.